Hey everyone, Howie Fisher from Fisher's Flies. Thanks for checking in. Today I am tying up a classic streamer pattern, the Crelix Minnow. This is a phenomenal streamer pattern tied and created by Chuck Craft. If you've never fished one, I highly encourage it. It's caught many species worldwide. For the hook today, I'm using a streamer stripper in size one from Fulling Mill. Uh, any long shanked streamer hook will do though, preferably a four or five XL. For the thread today, I'm using a Danville 210 waxed thread and tan. Traditionally, this fly is tied on a 3X or 4XL or even 5 extra long streamer hook. Traditionally, Chuck Craft used a Mustad. Uh, any long streamer hook, though, is going to do just fine. You do want to make sure it's a longer streamer hook to allow for the right proportions. So to get started on this fly, I'm just going to build up a little bit of a base for the dumbbell eyes here. So I'm going to take some thread wraps back and forth until I get a good little base for the dumbbell eyes to sit on top of. I like to go back usually back and forth usually two or three times. For measurement on the dumbbell eyes, I like to tie one and then use that as reference for all the other flies, but I'm going to make it about the length of the dumbbell eyes backwards. So I'm going to go ahead and secure this loosely by taking three wraps in either direction first to begin with. And then take some wraps around the shank, make sure it's not going anywhere. Again, measure it if you're tying up a bunch of these, make sure it's in the right place. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and take wraps around the wraps, the base of the eyes to pull in those wraps. I'm going to flip the hook over and then take wraps again. And I'm taking them the same direction because essentially what this is doing is, or the same way I did originally, because this is going to actually wrap the opposite direction and again, help these dumbbell eyes to stay in place. Again, I'm going to take wraps around the base and then those dumbbell flies really aren't going anywhere or dumbbell eyes aren't really going anywhere. And the, one of the great things about this pattern is it really only calls for one material and that's MFC fish flash in the original colors are gold and silver or gold and bronze, copper. Uh, here I'm going to be using copper and gold as you see. We're going to go ahead and get started with the copper color here for the tail. And again, one of the cool things about this fly is you can tie it up in almost endless variations. So you can tie it with a copper tail like I'm going to do here. And then a gold underbelly and a copper top. Or you can tie it with a gold tail, gold underbelly, and then a copper top. Or an endless variation of other colors. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a, a decent chunk. Um, you're going to have to tie a handful of these really before you get used to about how much you want. You do want this fly to be a little bit fuller. So I'm going to grab about a pencil width. I'm going to go ahead and pluck out all of the shorts and the longs like you would with a uh, hair, like deer hair or elk hair. I'm going to go ahead and take a couple loose wraps and then take some tighter wraps to make sure that's not going anywhere. And then I'm going to go ahead and start taking wraps backwards. These wraps can be pretty secure, but once you start getting towards the hook bend, you want to loosen up these wraps a little bit. If you take super tight wraps when you get to the end of this section, you're going to make the fibers flare out again, kind of like deer hair or elk hair. So if you just loosen up those last half dozen wraps or so, you still want them to be firm, but not too tight. And you can see that those fibers just go straight backwards. So then I'm just going to cover up this, uh, the remaining fibers. You can uh, take touching wraps or overlapping wraps to do so. In the end, it's not super crucial that you cover up every fiber um, unless you have a little bit of OCD like I do. But ultimately, all of the fibers are going to be covered up by the rest of the fly. Once I've covered up those remaining fibers a decent amount, I'm going to go ahead and bring my thread to right behind the hook eye and I'm going to grab my second material and you want to remember that this fly is going to ride hook point up so at this point the hook is upside down so you want to remember that this color 
if you're tying it this way, is going to be the lighter color. So here I'm making the belly of this fly gold to imitate the belly of a bait fish. So again, I'm going to go ahead and grab a decent sized chunk, about a pencil width or so, if you will. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and repair the fibers, pluck out any shorts, any super long ones, and then square up the front edge to make tying this in a little bit easier. So to tie these fibers in easiest, you want to bring these fibers in at an angle, um, almost like a 45 degree angle to the hook shank. If you've ever tied a clouser minnow, it's going to be similar to tying in that buck hair. So I'm going to take three or four firm wraps and then bring the thread behind the eyes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two looser wraps and then bring my thread straight up. And this is something Chuck Craft taught me. And then once you have that, you pull straight up hard. And what that does is that flares those fibers out like this and make sure you get really full hook coverage. Uh, if you didn't catch that, it might be worth rewinding or going back and watching that again. Um, but it's a pretty uh, useful technique that I learned from him. Next, I'm going to grab more copper. So again, right now, how you're seeing this fly is how it's going to ride when you're fishing it. So I'm going to make the top of this fly copper again. Uh, so most fish, bait fish patterns, most uh, fish in the water are going to have a darker top and a lighter bottom. So again, uh, that's why I'm going with this copper on top. So uh, same thing as every other step, just repeating this, grabbing some fibers, prepping it, pulling out the shorts and longs, and squaring up the edges. This last tie-in is usually the hardest part of this entire fly. Uh, when you have the uh, bulk that's already on there from the bottom section, front bottom section that you tied in, the fibers here can tend to slip sometimes, or the thread can slip off the fibers sometimes. So if you need to, if you're getting frustrated with the step, what you can do is you can add a, a little drop of super glue uh, underneath or on the thread wraps before you start tying this in. Just beware that you now have super glue on, so it makes it a little bit more difficult sometimes to undo what you've done. So um, that hopefully that will help. Um, but sometimes with this front section, you might have to try and tie it in two or three times i recommend not letting go of the fibers until you know you have it in place like i just did there so again i'm going to make sure that these fibers look good before really finishing this fly and all i'm doing on this last step is making sure this head is nice and clean and i'm going to go ahead and flatten my thread out to build up a nice little head all of those fibers are covered up and nothing is poking out still And once I get this head where I want it to, I'm going to go ahead and grab my whip finish tool and just give it a three or four turn whip finish. I only do one because I cover my head with uh, Solaris Bone Dry, which makes it bulletproof. And the last step, which is the most important step, is coloring this top brown. If you don't do that, you won't catch fish on this fly. That, of course, is a joke. You can skip this step if you want. Uh, just fun little creativity piece there. So again, as I mentioned, I'm going to coat the head of this with solar as bone dry or UV resin. This makes this fly truly bulletproof. I'm also going to go ahead and... Um, hit the top or the bottom of the eyes with this uh, because those are exposed fibers they can break especially if you're fishing for toothier fish and then i'm going to go ahead and hit the thread wraps behind the eyes a little bit as well again just because they're exposed thread wraps i want to make sure this fly lasts as long as possible i'm going to go ahead and cure that and then we're going to go ahead and trim this up a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my scissors in here behind the dumbbell eyes. I'm going to slide it in and then I'm going to slide this back to the hook bend. So the front section is going to be one or the same length. And then I'm just going to go around the hook shank and do this until it looks all the same. So I'm going to continue to slide my, mm -hmm. my scissors in. 
And by doing this, I'm missing the tail section because I'm sliding it in before the tail section. A long pair of scissors like these uh, Renamed um, long blade, extra long blade scissors are super useful for something like this. A four inch pair of scissors is good too, um, but it makes this step super easy. At this point, it's probably easiest to take this fly out of your vise and trim it up, but I'm going to keep it here for, for everybody to see. So last, I'm going to do this tail, and I'm just going to grab it and cut it all one length. And this is, again, something Chuck Craft taught me. So if you could take an old piece of card, lay one fly on it, and draw lines on it like this, uh, it makes the cutting process super easy and super reproducible. Uh, you could take an index card or, or something similar. But again, there you have it, the Chuck Craft Creelix. Super deadly fly if you've never fished it. It has caught fish species all over the world. But there you have it again, the Chuck Craft Creelix. Super effective fly for many, many species. Fun to tie in my opinion. Tie them up, fish them, let us know what you think.